Now I want to illustrate how ggplot can be used to answer a particular question using the data set that we were looking at. So the question that we're interested in here is what has happened to suicide trends over time? And importantly, in this section, a lot of the visualizations I'm going to produce along the way are not going to be very good. And that's because that's what actually happens when you're trying to search for a, a good visualization. You tread along a path and most of the steps along that path aren't very good steps. But it ultimately leads you, hopefully, to a ultimate visualization or a number of ultimate visualizations which are pretty good. And ggplot allows you to make very quick changes to your plots and hence be quite agile in terms of the way in which you arrive at a good visualization. So here, because I'm looking at trends, I want to plot the year on the horizontal axis and the suicide count on the vertical axis. And so here I'm just starting off with a relatively simple ggplot command. So df is the name of the data set that we're using here as I've called it in R. Uh, and we're plotting year on the horizontal axis and the, and the suicide count on the vertical axis. Notice that I've got an alpha equals 0 0.3 here, which is just so that I add some transparency to my point so I can see uh, those cases where the points are sort of all on top of one another, just what the sort of local density of points are. So what do we think of this visualization? Well, for me, it's not all that informative. It's very hard to see what the trends are here. So I wouldn't say this is a very good visualization, but it's a start. Instead, what we might think to do is to create a box plot where we've got different uh, boxes for each of the different years. So to, to accomplish this, I've had to do a couple of things. One of them is I've changed from John Point to John Box Plot here. And then the other one is I've had to, it, this is a kind of R specific command, I've had to make year a factor variable so that it knows that my, my sort of, to treat my X axis here as a discrete variable rather than a continuous one. Because if it was a continuous one, it would sort of end up drawing a single box. But that's not too important. Okay, so I, I've basically been able to move to a, a box plot with just changing two things here. Perhaps this is a step in the right direction because I can start to see that hopefully trends in suicides are going down over time, but it's a bit unclear. It's hard to read the x-axis here. Uh, and so what can we do about that? One of the things I can do is I can use this kind of post hoc command in ggplot, which is called flip, which as the name suggests, it flips the x and the y-axis. And so now I end up with at least something I can read on the y-axis here. I, I can read the years now. Um, and I can start to see that hopefully there is some sort of downward trend in suicides over all the countries. But again, it's not a very good visualization, I wouldn't say. I'm sure there are better ways of representing these data. It's hard, for example, to see what's happening at the individual country level. So to allow me to look at individual country level trends, what I might think to do is add different color boxes for each of the different countries. And I can accomplish that by adding just one command in the base kind of ggplot uh, aesthetics. And that is by adding fill equals country. And fill here corresponds to what's gonna be the color of the filling of the different box plots. And that aesthetic is inherited by John's box plot. And so John box plot knows to interpret that aesthetic as creating a different color for each of the different countries here. What do we think of this visualization? Well, for me, it's really quite noisy. It's very hard to kind of see the individual trends at the country level. Also, it's not great because at some different years, I seem to have different coverages of data. And so it just doesn't look very nice because in sort of the late eighties, I seem to only have data for the kind of the UK. And so here it looks like uh, my, my bars are much wider than they are over here. And so it doesn't look very visually appealing either. Another thing that my analysis thus far hasn't done is, if you remember back to our data, we have uh, data for each different age group. We have suicide counts for each different age group. So I wasn't looking at that previously. So what I might think to do is go back to my kind of plot that I had, which was trend uh, over year, the suicide number, and back to my kind of John point. But now to include that different characteristic of data, the, the sort of different age groups, then I add uh, shape equals age here. And so what I get is I get the, the 
points which are coloured according to country and they've got different shapes for the different age groups. And so I produced this and, and that seems to have accomplished what I wanted in terms of at least uh, I've got different colours for countries and different shapes for different age groups. But it's impossible to see any patterns here. This isn't a very good visualisation, so how can we improve it? One issue at the moment is that I think because I'm trying to overlay data for lots of different categories onto a single panel, it's very difficult to make out any sort of patterns. So uh, one way to add different dimensions to the data is using aesthetics. Another way which is especially useful for variables that are categorical is to split plots into what are called facets. And here each facet represents a plot of a subset of your data. So how does that work in our case? So here, to do this, uh, I've gone back to just having a, a, a shape aesthetic. I've removed the color aesthetic from the base ggplot command. And I've still got my geom point here. And then I've then put plus facet wrap. And I've supplied as an argument to facet wrap the country, which is a category here. And what's that gone ahead and done? It's produced a different panel for each of the different countries in our analysis. So I've got one for Bahrain, Lithuania, Sri Lanka, the UK and Uzbekistan. So that's quite neat, right? I haven't had to repeat the sort of process of, of plotting for each of the different countries separately in my analysis. ggplot just goes and under the hood effectively it does that work for us. So that's quite powerful. Uh, and then within each panel effectively I've got my uh, plots. So I've got my, my scatter plot and I've got shapes for the different ages. And so we see that each of the different facets essentially behaves like the overall kind of ggplot thing but it just does a individual plot for each of the countries in this case. Note that in Python the command to do facet wrap after it is slightly different um, but it's very uh, only very uh, minorly different so you can see that in the answers to the problem sets that I provide just how slightly different that is. So what do we think of this visualization? So it's sort of getting towards something that we think is quite good. Um, but it's still got some issues. For example, I still find it a bit hard to see what the individual age groups are doing here because a lot of them, they're kind of lying on top of one another. So how can we improve that? So one way in which I can improve things is by moving from a facet wrap to a facet grid. And facet grid, what it does is it creates a grid of subpanels. And this takes as its arguments, effectively, the fact that I want to use country as the row variable. And here I'm specifying that the age group is going to be the uh, column variable here. This last command here effectively just allows us to have different kind of scales for the different subpanels. And so you can see for Bahrain that the count of suicides is much lower than is, let's say, the count of suicides for uh, the UK. And so scales equals three essentially allows us to have that and still be able to visualize what the data is doing in each of the individual countries. Notice that to actually make this uh, plot. I've actually taken the age out of the aesthetics here in the base kind of call to GG plot because now that's being handled by the columns. So what do we think of this visualization? To me it's looking pretty good. It's looking like we're almost there in terms of something that's interpretable. There is something that's kind of remaining though when I look at this which is that you know why do I have these different lines in let's say the UK so I have, have two sort of sets of almost parallel lines in some senses. So what's that due to? Well, it's effectively because there's this other variable that we're not accounting for, which is the sex of the particular group that we're looking at. So to handle that, all I do is I include color equals sex in the base call to ggplot. So this is an aesthetic in the base call to ggplot, uh, which is inherited by everything else. And so now what we get is we get a different color for each of the different sexes. So now in the UK, I can make out that there are quite distinct patterns between males and females. And unfortunately, it looks like uh, the suicide rate for males is much higher in most of the age categories, uh, at least in the UK, than it is for females. And that's a, a relatively well-known thing in terms of the epidemiology of, of mental health, which is that men are in general not as good at going in and seeking help as our, 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 our females. Uh, and so that might be partly behind some of this reason that, that the male uh, suicide count is so much higher than it is for females. So we can make out that sort of pattern in the data. 
we can make out some other things that we can start to see that there are trends in the data, but it's still a little bit difficult to see these trends in the data. I think that's partly because the fact we've used a point plot here rather than a line. And so what I do next is I actually just change geom point to be geom line. And now we start to see these trends a bit better. We can start to see a bit more clearly what's happening to the count of suicides in each of these groups over time. How can I improve things further? Well, I don't know if it's quite an improvement, but I find it useful is to include John Smooth here. And what John Smooth does is it inherits these uh, various aesthetics and it draws a regression line for each of the groups in our data and for each of the panels. And so here, what we end up with is regression lines. And these to me allow me to see quite clearly what's happened to the count of suicides over time in the various countries in the different age groups. And so we see a lot of heterogeneity in what's happening. So to me, this is a, a reasonable visualization that we've ended up here. It's a lot better than what we started with. And it allows us to see quite clearly what's happened to the different uh, counts of suicides in the various different countries and different age groups. And it allows us to compare between them. So I actually think we've arrived at something relatively quickly uh, using ggplot that would take us a long, long time to accomplish using the traditional approach. And the problem with the traditional approach is often if we ended up with this and it wasn't very good, then we'd have to do a lot of work to then get a different sort of visualization. So I think this example hopefully illustrates just the agility of doing visualization using ggplot.